Okay, we are starting Hamlet Act 5, and there's only two scenes in this act, and this first act is set in a graveyard, and we have two clowns or two um, jesters who are digging a grave. So there's a lot of back and forth, and this is quite different from the rest of the play, but there's there's some good commentary here and some, some silly jokes, and... Uh, Shakespeare would always have something of a clown in a play uh, and this would appeal to the lower class of the audience and as you know the audience would be made up of of low class high class everybody went to see Shakespeare's plays and Shakespeare wanted to give er everyone in his audience something that they would enjoy so that's part of it but there's also some interesting things that happen here there's some commentary on well, if Ophelia did kill herself, we don't know if she did or not, but if she did, is it right that she's given a Christian burial? So traditionally, um, she wouldn't be allowed to be buried in the Christian graveyard. Hamlet does not... Uh, well, first, Hamlet comes along and he doesn't know whose grave is being buried and then he sees a skull and he finds out that it was his father's... Um, jester that used to live with them and entertain them a lot and he sees his skull here just in the ground and so that's quite a intense realization for him and then further on that along comes the funeral procession for Ophelia and this is when Hamlet first finds out that Ophelia is dead and then we find out um, did Hamlet really love her was he just stringing her along all this time and he has quite an intense reaction here so let's get into it so it won't take too long. Um, okay, so page 101, the two clowns are coming in with spades. Is she to be buried in Christian burial that willfully seeks her own salvation? I tell you, she is. And therefore make her grave straight. The crowner hath sat on her and finds it Christian burial. How can that be unless she drowned herself in her own defense? Why, tis found so. It must be, say, effendendo. It cannot be else. For here lies the point, if I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. And an act have three branches, and if it is to act, to do, and to perform our goal, she drowned herself wittingly. Nay, but hear you, goodman Delver. Give me leave, here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Good. If the man goes to this water and drown himself, it is will he, nil he, he goes, mark you that. But if the water comes to him and drowned him, he drowns not himself, ergo, he that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. But is this law? I married it, is it, Crowner's Quest law. Will you have the truth on it? If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should not have been buried out of Christian burial. Why, there thou sayest, and the more pity that great folk should have countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they're even Christian. Come, my spade, there is no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? He, I was the first that ever bore arms. Why, he had none. What art a heathen? How dost thou understand the scripture? The scripture says Adam digged. Could he dig without arms? I'll put another question to thee. If thou answered me not to the purpose, confess thyself. Go to. What is he that builds stronger than either the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The gallows maker, for that frame outlives a thousand tenants. I like thy wit well in good faith, the gallows does well. But how does it well? It does well to those who do ill. Now it does ill to say the gallows is built stronger than the church, Ergo, the gallows may do well to thee. To, to it again, come. Who builds stronger than a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? Ay, tell me that in unyoke. Mary, now I can tell. To it. Mass, I cannot tell. And then Hamlet and Horatio enter far off. Cudgel thy brains no more about it, for your dull ass will not mend his pace with beating, and when you are asked this question next, say, A grave maker. The houses that he makes last till doomsday. Go, get thee to Yagen. Fetch me a stoop of liquor. And then the clown is singing. In youth, when I did love, did love, me thought it was very sweet to contract all the time for my behoof, for me thought there was a nothing I meet. Is this no f Ooh. costumes?
Has this fellow no feeling of his business that he sings at graves making? Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Tis even so, the hand of little employment hath the daintier sense. But age with his stealing steps hath caught me in his clutch, and hath shipped me in the land as I had never been such. That skull had a tongue in it. It could sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground as if it were Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. It might be the paint of a politician, which this ass now over offices, one that would circumvent God, might it not? It might, my lord. Or of a courtier, which could say, Good morning, sweet lord. How does thou, sweet lord? This might be my lord such and such, such a one that praised my lord such a one's horse when he meant to beg it, might it not? Aye, my lord. Why, even so, and now my lady's lady worms, trapless, and knocked about the mazard with a sexton spade. Here's fine revolution, as we had trick to see it. Did these bones cost no more the breeding but to play at loggets with them? Mine ache to think on it. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, for in a shrouding sheet, oh, a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's another. Why, may not that be the skull of a lawyer? Where be his quiddities now, his quillets, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks? Why does he suffer this rude knave now to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and will not tell him of his action of battery? Hmm. This fellow might be in its time a great buyer of land with his statutes, his recognizances, his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the fine of his fines and the recovery of his recoveries? To have his fine pate full of fine dirt? Will his vouchers vouch him no more of his purchases and double ones too than the length and breadth of a pair of indentures? The very conveyances of his lands will hardly lie in this box, and must the inheritor himself have no more, huh? Not a jot more, my lord. Is not parchment made of sheepskins? Aye, my lord, and of calfskins too. They are sheep and calves which seek out assurance in that. I'll speak to this fellow. Whose grave's this, sirrah? Mine, sir. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir, and therefore tis not yours. For my part I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou does line it to be in it and say tis thine, tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir, twill away again from me to you. What man does thou dig it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute this knave is! We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. By the Lord, Horatio, this three years I have taken note of it. The age is grown so picked that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier, he galls his kib. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days in the year I came to it that day, our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was that very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. Oh, Mary, why was he sent into England? Why, because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there, or if he do not, tis no great matter there. Why? Twill not be seen him there. There the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark, I have been sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? In faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as we have many pocky corpses nowadays that will scarcely hold the laying in, it will last you some eight year or nine year. Tanner will last you nine year. 
why he lasts more than another. Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that he will keep out water a great while, and your water is a sore decayer of your horse and dead body. Here's a skull now. This skull has lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse and mad's fellow it was. Uh, whose, whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. A, a poured a flagon of rhinish on my head once. This same skull, sir. This was York's skull, the king's jester. This? Even that. Oh, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest. Fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and how, now, how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment, that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chop-fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick to this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Ugh, prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Does thou think Alexander looked to this fashion in the earth? Even so. And smelt so? Puh. Even so, my lord. To what base uses may we return, Horatio? Why, may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bunghole? T'were to consider too curiously to consider so. No faith, not a jot, but to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it as thus. Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returneth into dust, the dust is earth, of earth we make loam, and why of that loam, whereto it was converted, why might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. But soft, soft a while, here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Okay, so we have the body of Ophelia and Laertes and mourners and the king and the queen, etc. Who is this they follow? And with such maimed rites, this does betoken the corpse they follow does with desperate hand fordo its own life. Ooh, twas of some estate. Coach we a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command oversways the order. She should in ground unsanctified have lodged to the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she is allowed her virgin crats, her maiden instruments, and the bringing home of Bell and Burial. Must there be no more done? No more be done. We shall profane the service of the dead to sing a requiem and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. I hoped, I hoped thou shouldst been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewn thy grave. O oh, terrible woe, fall ten times trouble on that cursed head whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off in the earth a while till I've caught her once more in mine arms. Jumps in the grave. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead, till of this flat a mountain you have made to overtop old Pelion or the skyish head of blue Olympus. What 
is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take your soul. <laughs> thy prayest not well. I pray thee, I pray thee, take thy fingers from my throat. For though I am not splenitive and rash, yet have I in me something dangerous, which let thy wisdom fear. Hold off thy hand. Pluck them asunder. Good, my lord, be quiet. Why, I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids will no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my son. What will thou do for her? Oh, he's mad, Laertes. For love of God, forbear him. Swoons, show me what that will do. Would thou weep? Would thou fight? Would thou fast? Would thou tear thyself? Would drink up easel, eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Does thou come here to whine to outface me with leaping in her grave? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prayed of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us, till our ground singeing is paid against the burning throne, make also like a war. Nay, and thou mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness. And thus a while the fit will work on him, anon as patient as the female dove, when that her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear you thus, what is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, but it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will meow, and dog will have his day. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. I'll put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then, impatience are proceeding. <laughs>